I was thinking about Praise the Lord. I, uh, I can certainly praise the Lord. It's been a few years. I grew up in a family that uh, uh, didn't know God or didn't go to church. And so I wasn't really um, pre-indoctrinated, I guess, with a certain set of ideas or rules on what religion was about. But uh, as I was growing up, I, I just, uh, I guess it's the natural um, instinct within me. And I just believed that there was a God out there somewhere. I'm not sure what kind of a God or how to reach him or anything like that. But um, I didn't, I don't believe I ever really searched for God. I just went about my life and doing the things that I was doing where um, adrenaline was involved. It was, it was always, you know, the roller coasters, the, the going fast in a car or a motorcycle or, you know, those type of things. And so uh, and a, bit, a bit adventurous I was, so it took me over to Australia. I was hitchhiking around Australia with my surfboard and a backpack, and, uh, and a guy picked me up one day and asked me just a couple of simple questions. I mean, it was so amazing, right? He, he was on his way home. Looking back on it now, he only had about uh, 20 minutes of a drive, and, uh, and he had picked me up. And obviously it was uh, in the Lord's timing, but um, he asked me a couple simple questions about, do I believe in God? And I thought, well, yeah, you know, it doesn't everybody. And do I want to go to heaven? And do I know how to get there? And and I was stumped. I really didn't know. So I had my own sort of wisdom and ideas, and which was really kind of useless. But um, he says, well, you know, the Bible says, and I'd never really read, read the Bible. And so I was kind of intrigued. It provoked me to get baptized because as, as he was saying, repent, get baptized in water by full immersion and God will give you this Holy Spirit and you'll speak in tongues. Well, I was, I've always been a guy that if, um, if you can prove it to me, I'll believe it. If you just tell me, well, you know, I'm, I'm still on the fence. And so he said that God would prove himself to me and fill me with the Holy Spirit. And so I thought, okay, and there were things in my life that I needed to repent of. And so I could see that was that was in order, and I, uh, if I, he was talking about Jesus being baptized and requiring us to be baptized, and I thought, well, okay, you know, I can do that, I guess. And uh, um, so a couple days later, I got baptized by full immersion there in, uh, in Australia, uh, in Elizabeth, the assembly up north. And then three days later, I received the Holy Spirit spoke in tongues, and my life changed instantly. It was the whole, it was like the light switch went on, right? The, that there was no desire for the drugs and the alcohol and the lifestyle I'd been living in. My idea was before this point that if if you're a, a Christian, that um, you're sort of a, a goody two shoes, never do anything wrong. Your you know your sin, your 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 sins forgiven. You're going to heaven and all that. But the the payback to that is you don't have any fun. I thought they were boring, uh, or I thought you had to be boring. Um, but if you didn't want to be boring, then you were a sinner and you were going to hell. It didn't matter. But, uh, but I realized that once I got filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues that I could do fun things. I could still go surfing. I could still go skydiving and ride motorcycles and in cars, not, not fast like I used to, but, uh, there was certainly a time and place for that. But it's been a pretty exciting, uh, uh life, uh, walking on in the Lord. My life has certainly changed. He's given me a purpose to walk truthfully and rightfully and uh, it's changed the direction of my life. And so I've been walking along and it's not always smooth and roses and, you know, everything's perfect all the time. There's challenges and there's trials and there's problems. But I guess the, the main difference is with these problems comes the peace of God in knowing that he will guide, he will strengthen, and he will help solve those problems that I have and the situations that come up. And so there's many things that uh, certainly have come up in my life and I've needed help with solving and God's been there and it's been really a cool thing. One of the things I would like to just touch on though is over the last, um, I don't know, five or six years, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Kelly's sister, Terry, uh, has had this boyfriend, Greg, and um, uh, we've, they live in Denver uh, well, they're getting ready to move to North Carolina or South Carolina now, but they've been in Denver, and so we don't see him very often. But uh, throughout the years, five or six years or so, we've saw, seen him once or twice a year, right? Christmas or birthdays or whatnot. And um, during that period of time, Kelly's witnessed to, uh, to him and her sister, and I've witnessed to them, and Josh and Cassie, and we've all been involved in talking about the gospel. Uh, well, Terry... 
Kelly's sister isn't really interested. She's, you know, that's no thanks. But Greg has always been, hmm, that's interesting. Oh, that's really amazing. And a couple of years ago, um, he had an issue where uh, there was possibility of cancer. He was diagnosed with possibility of cancer in his body, and he reached out. And he says, can you guys have some prayer for me? Because I know that, you know, you pray. And, and, and he, would, he, he goes to church. They go to church, um, which is, you know, like any other church. But uh, he reached out and said, can you pray for me? And so um, this is pretty uh, serious in my life. And, and can you do that? And so we're like, yeah, no problem. Matter of fact, we'll have a prayer and fast for you. And we did this a couple years ago. And uh, so we had a prayer and fast. And uh, at, at the end of our prayer and fast, I think it was only a, a one day prayer and fast, maybe a two day or something. But uh, at the end of the prayer and fast, that day he had called and said, the results came back and I am cancer free, have no cancer. And it was like, wow, you know, this is just amazing. He says, thank you for praying for us. And we're like, you know, we believe in God. and He's a powerful God. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, me too. And you know, God does miracles. Oh yeah, me too. He's always agreeable that God is this miracle working God. And when we talk to him about the Holy Spirit and receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, he says, I've never done that. I've never seen it. I've heard about it, but I don't know anything about it. And again, over the years, all of us have kind of bits and pieces and talked to him and given him, uh, you know, information and scriptures and such. And, and he's always been interested. Well, uh, this weekend was a weekend where it was uh, Kelly's uncle uh, had passed away a couple months back. And so they had a memorial for him yesterday up in Issaquah. And so, and he was there, Greg, Greg and Terry and the whole family. Well, I got a chance to sit down and talk to Greg once again. And I said, hey, Greg, what do you, you know, we've talked over the years about this, this speaking in tongues thing. And he says, you know, he says, I really don't know anything about it. I have never been to a church and I've, I've never heard it. I said, well, you know, it's powerful. It's, it's, it's a life-changing experience. It's the Holy Spirit and God dwelling in your, in, within your body and in your life. And he was like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's really interesting. I'm really interested in it. And I said, well, look, I said, I can give you some scriptures and I can show you in the Bible. And, and uh, I mean, if you're interested, we can, you know, go to the next step sort of thing. And he's like, you know, he said, I would really like that. I would really, I'm really interested to find out what this is all about because I've never heard it or seen it and et cetera. And I said, no problem. I said, I'll, I'll get you some scriptures. I didn't have a pamphlet with me, but I wanted to keep the email thing going with him because they're moving. And obviously right now they're in full moving mode, packing mode, getting rid of stuff mode. And, um, but, but the door is open and he says, yeah, he said, I'd really like to be um, in contact and keep in contact and look at this stuff. So send me that stuff. The cool part about, the cool part about that is they're moving to South Carolina, which is right next to Georgia and probably only two or three hours from where the camp is and maybe where even the Athens Saints are. And so I told him that, look, I'll send you this information. If you have any questions, call me. We can talk. He says, yeah, I'll definitely be calling you. And uh, the idea is that when we go out for the camp in Georgia, we can always stop and see them and maybe invite them along as well. But he's one of these guys that even over the years, he's still hungering for what is this? I want to know. And we just keep it up. You know, you keep watering that seed you plant. You keep, you keep cultivating the ground. And uh, we did have a conversation uh, a few years ago about um, he was, um, um, he, he was a, a churchgoer. And he and Terry had been living together for a number of years. And, uh, and so we'd had a conversation about you know what the scripture talks about with not being married and having a relationship. And, uh, and at that point he had said to me, he says, you know, yeah, he says, I, I know I need to be married. We need to be married. Uh, but she's not ready to make that step yet. And so, um, but a couple of years ago or a year ago or so they ended up, <clears throat> excuse me, getting married. So that was pretty good. So it seems like he's still kind of hanging on and interested. And, and so we'll keep watering. Keep watering that seed, and who knows how long. I think it was Ken Pryor's wife, Maxine, would it take her 23 years or something of hearing the gospel periodically? I mean, not being beaten by it, right? And, and that's not what we do. We just offer the good news. If people want to take it, great. If they don't, it's all right. We'll go to offer it to somebody else. So 
Um, but again, all that started because I heard the gospel many years ago and decided to take a step and say, God, work in my life. I'm going to make this deal with you, God. I'll give you a couple of days to work in my life. If this doesn't work, well, then I'm just going to continue doing what I, as if I was in any position to say, look, God, I'm going to make a deal with you. But, but it worked. He's a great God. He's a powerful God. He's never left me. He's always been there, the peace, the comfort, the strength, and I look forward to his return. Amen.